then, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second round of Euro Open 2016 here in Hamburg. We're debating the same motion as before. You all know the rules, so without further ado, I'd like to call on the first speaker of the proposition. Thank you. We live in a world where destroying the environment is perfectly acceptable so long as it is prof profitable. Coal and fossil fuels, the energy resources behind industrialization and economic growth, also spew toxic pollutants and greenhouse gases into our atmosphere, poisoning the air we breathe and driving global warming. If you really think that the economy is more important than the environment, try holding your breath while you count your money. Because we believe that you can't put a price on life, we are proud to propose. A couple of things in this speech. First, I'll go over a couple of things to consider in this round, and then I'll introduce our first two substantive arguments on how prioritizing the economy over the environment pollutes both our morals and our bodies. Our second speaker will introduce our third argument on how in the long term it actually harms the economy to do so. But first, a couple of things to consider that might help frame the way that you view this round. We believe that this debate takes place on both the principal and practical level, meaning that in addition to proving the pragmatic benefits of prioritizing the environment over the economy, we will show that there is a moral obligation to do so. But when we say that the environment is more important than the economy, what exactly do we mean by that? Well, we don't mean that in absolute terms. Team government also recognizes the value of protecting the economy. However, we think that when the two come into conflict, the environment ought to be preferred over the economy. Conversely, the opposition must prove why the economy is more valuable when the two come into conflict. Now I'd like to introduce our first argument, namely that protecting the environment is more principally correct. Two layers under this, obligation to people and obligation to the environment. The first layer is that the first duty of a government is to protect its people. Any social contract theory ranging from Rousseau to Locke to Hobbes will tell you that people create a government in order to protect themselves. Now, where these policies differ is exactly how to achieve this, but all of them fundamentally agree that protecting the safety and well-being of their populations is the first priority. And the reason that this is true is because human life is more important than anything. A nation cannot exist if it doesn't have people to fill it. And furthermore, we believe that protecting the quality of life is important too. Being alive is certainly fantastic, but you can't get much out of that life if you are living in a constant state of desperation. If you don't have food, water, clean air, or a breathable atmosphere because of a poisoned environment, then you're not really living. It is principally wrong to destroy people's lives in, for, in pursuit of financial gain. Economic losses yeah. can be recouped. However, you can't bring back a human life. Luxuries should not come at the expense of someone's fundamental right to live. Because of this, the first duty of a government is to ensure the livelihood of its people. And if lives are in jeopardy because we are uh, preserving the economy over the environment, then we need to shift the government's priorities. Our second layer under this argument is environmental ethics. In many realms, regardless of the outcome, some actions are just inherently right or inherently wrong. For example, while child labor can certainly be profitable, we don't believe in that action because it is just morally ridiculous. Some things have intrinsic value, while, and, and we have a moral obligation to protect those things. The environment is one of those things. It has its own life, and more selfishly, it protects our own. The value of money, however, is not intrinsic. It is artificially invented by the human race. The environment has inherent value that should be protected. Money does not. To prove this, look no further than living creatures beyond the, the human race. Animals can exist completely fine without a financial backing. However, they can become essentially extinct if you destroy the environment that they live in. Something with its own, it is something with its own life. There is no monetary equivalent in terms of morals that needs to be upheld. Money does not have an intrinsic value that needs to be morally protected. Now, whether you, whether you practice shallow ecology and believe that we should protect nature because it protects us, or you practice deep ecology and believe that we should just protect the environment because it is right, there is one thing that is for certain. Nature is priceless. Now we'd like to introduce our second argument on physical health. Two layers under this. The first is lives. Emissions and pollution just harm, don't just harm the environment, eat away at the ozone layer, and cause global warming. They also tangibly affect human lives. 
For example, in China, there are 1.6 million deaths per year directly attributable to air pollution. Millions more in China suffer from painful, expensive respiratory diseases because of ridiculously poor air quality. <coughs> now, what is the reason behind this unbre nearly unbreathable atmosphere? Coal. But first, yes. How about the people that die because of starvation? What about the state? What is doing there? What's the Look, role of starvation? We, of the on, state with we starvation? on the proposition definitely agree that upholding the economy is important, but not at the point where it degrades the environment. Yes, we should uphold the economy so that people aren't starving, but there are ways to do that that don't harm the environment. And that needs to come first, because in the long term, if you don't have an environment to work with, then no one can survive. But moving on. The reason behind this un almost unbreathable atmosphere is coal. This substance definitely fuels industrial revolutions, but it also does untold damage to both our health and the environment. The millions of people and their families affected by toxic air pollution probably aren't going to be comforted by the fact that the Shanghai composite is up 0.06% as a result of these emissions. Now, most of these countries that emit a ton of toxic gases are from what is considered the Global South, or economically disadvantaged nations. UNICEF, a UNICEF report recently found that 600,000 children under five each year die because of air pollution, and most of these children are from those countries in the Global South. UNICEF urged these countries to switch to cleaner sources of energy and criticized them for not already doing so. While, yes, Renewable energy sources at this point are not quite as cheap as non-renewable energy sources. They're growing much more financially accessible, and the financial costs of switching to renewable resources are definitely justified, especially when you consider the human costs of not doing so. Now, our second layer under this argument is the value of economic growth. Economic growth should be viewed as a means to an end. Having a healthy inflation rate or a large GDP doesn't mean anything unless those things actually help people. See, having a healthy inflation rate isn't intrinsically valuable. It is only valuable insofar as it actually benefits a nation's population. However, at the point where the measures taken to achieve this economic growth, to achieve that healthy inflation rate and to achieve that strong GDP are creating an environment that is literally deadly to those that it is supposed to be protecting, the government needs to rethink its priorities. In that case, those actions are not justified. Economic growth is not intrinsically valuable. It is only as valuable as how strong it helps its populations. And when populations are being so vastly harmed by this economic growth, it is no longer justified. We have to preserve the environment and yes, while certain economic growth might be beneficial to people, if the environment is severely degraded in the process, and that process is harming individuals within these nations, it is no longer justified. At the point where neglecting the environment because of a fixation on financial gain means that people lose their lives, a government seriously has to rethink how it is going to approach these issues. We believe that you cannot put a price on human life and putting the environment in jeopardy also means that you put human lives in jeopardy, and that is simply not acceptable. We have to prioritize the environment, and while preserving the economy can be beneficial, we have to do it in a way that upholds the environment as well, because it must always come first. Thank you. Speaking time was eight minutes and one second. today in order to live tomorrow. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let me remind you the motion before we start that is this house believe that environment is more important than economic growth. To begin with, I want to define some points in, in, of the class of the of the debate. First of all, for whom is more important this uh, that environment is or the economic growth is more important. 
for the future, for the human race, and also for the individuals. And also, we are having a clash of a human necessity and also a lack of resources. Here, we are presenting a problem. The problem is that there exists a crisis. The crisis is in terms of environment, also of the economic, and also it exists a social pro crisis. And also, we still have a, a clash. We still uh, prioritize the economic growth, as many countries have made uh, as today, or they, we should prioritize environment. The burden of proof, what proposition team has to prove us to win this debate, that it exists the environmental crisis, and then also we will deal with this crisis, the environmental crisis, without the economic growth. What I'm saying, that to deal with this humanitarian, with this crisis, we must depend, that we will prove that we must depend on the economic growth. But can let me continue. Uh, we will talk about, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the, 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 there's not such a crisis. We're talking about the dealing with the limited resources. And my second speaker will talk about the thing today with tomorrow. My first speaker will analyze the debate in analysis point. To be before I start with our argumentation, I want to deal with some points of proposition team. Ladies and gentlemen, they asked you to prove why the economic growth is essential in order to solve that is essential. Why I'm talk first of all. Economic, without economic growth, what will happen with the natural disasters? What will happen with Haiti? No, thank you. What will happen with Haiti? With, with countries that with dealing with natural disasters, countries that have no resources. And ladies and gentlemen, they talk about a moral obligation of these people. Why a natural disaster that had not been caused? By the human, be, Sir. no, thank you. A problem of the human. And then, when this when this matter happened, this uh, natural disaster happened, who will be the one most affected? Of, of course, the poor people. But no, Sir. thank you. We should, we may, we must think of these poor people. We, basing in economic growth in order to save these people. We, as a proposition team, we want to protect the human beings. But in these cases, no, uh, oh, okay. By these cases, where is the environment when natural, when natural, uh, when natural matters happen? What, uh, where would be the, uh, the environment to protect the environment? It won't be as useful as, as useful as by focusing on the economic growth and then Sir. no thank you focusing on the economic growth that they will be save lives continuing uh, they talk about the animal the animals the problem of what will happen we we are set the child level and also it is more ridiculous that money is not equivalent to moral well, let's let that will be analyzed in uh, in on how they be. But they talk about what if we if we finish with ha with animals, we extinct animals, ladies and gentlemen. How these animals? I want pro our proposition team to uh, to uh, answer this question. How animals, as I have defined, is, uh, affect to the future the human race and also the individuals, as I have defined in my case. Ladies and gentlemen, the pollution, the, glo the global warming. I want to talk about the global warming. This is a point, another, another point that it would be continuing to develop in my argumentation. We are facing a geological era. That uh, the, the studies, if there are studies that prove that the geological era is the one who is causing the global warming. The global warming is not part, or is not caused by the human. We are living, sure. let me finish the point, please. We are living in a geological era that says that the global warming that makes 
too more hot the summers, it makes more freezing the, the winters. And also, by this geological era, in the future, there will freeze a big part of the earth. But you certainly disagree. Even if you were correct that warming itself isn't man-made, air pollution, water pollution, and deforestation still kill millions of people each year, that is by definition a crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set to crisis, but we think that there is a bigger crisis. We, are, we have people dying by starvation, ladies and gentlemen, that seven, uh, seven, uh, 700 million, nearly 1,800 million, Die due to starvation. How many people die of this water pollution? How many people die due to this starvation by not having any food in their in their uh, in their houses, ladies and gentlemen? This is a problem of not of, and that will be solved by focusing more in economic growth. So, they I want to refit the value of the economic growth. What will put food in your in your in your house? The economic growth that will save more starvation, that will uh, reduce the starvation, or the or the proposition that have talked about that the environment, that protects the environment. Okay, to continue, I want to uh, I want to pass to my argumentation. We are not denying that there is a crisis, but ladies and gentlemen, who is killing more people? Who is killing more people in the in the in the, uh, in the economic uh, the, sorry starvation or the, or the uh, or the water pollution, ladies and gentlemen? Let's focus where how many people live in developing countries, how many people population of the of the world lives in in uh, in developing countries where the starvation is big and. We should still focus in on environment in these developing countries. Then I want to point. I want to sell some uh, some uh, samples. One out of three people in the world are lack to access to basic needs such as the toilet or the bathroom. In Venezuela, ladies and gentlemen, we are having hours for waiting for a simply bread. And also, we have a 42 percent of the world of without healthcare facilities. In, sorry, in Africa. I want to uh, introduce my argumentation, my second argumentation that my second speaker will develop that the state has limited resources. Again, only a few countries can focus on this, really, it can focus on this environmental problem. And how many countries in the world are certainly developing countries that these really need to uh, receive economic growth? So, for all these reasons, I strongly believe this motion should and must fall. Thank you so much. Speaking time was 8 minutes and 38 so seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the year 2016, where you can pollute the air, poison our drinking water, and if you can make a profit out of, off of that, then that's completely okay. But on team proposition, we think that type of attitude, those type of actions are morally corrupt, which is why we are very proud to propose this motion today. So few things in the round. First, I will be addressing what should be considered as we go throughout the debate, then deconstructing my opponent's case, then responding to the attacks they made on or ours, and lastly delivering the third substantive about the unintended consequences of team opposition. So let's go to the what we should consider in the round today. They tell you that we have to prove that environmental crisis does exist and we should try to solve that over prioritizing the economy. We say, okay, we will show this throughout the round. But then second, what we tell you is that when the environment and when the economy come into conflict, us on team proposition must show you why there's a reason why you would say that the environment is more important and vice versa on team opposition. 
So going to their first argument, they talk about this idea that when it comes to the environmental crisis we speak of throughout this debate, that global warming is not actually caused by humans, so instead of trying to tackle this issue and trying to solve it, we should instead just kind of ignore it. First of all, we think this is just once again morally corrupt to ignore this environmental crisis that we do all agree exists. But second, we would say that at the point where over 90% of scientists in the international community agree that yes, um, global warming is real and it is caused by man, we would say that we should probably do something about it. But then second, even if you do believe them and take them at their highest ground, what we see here is that man-made actions such as polluting the water and polluting the air lead to millions of deaths each year. And these things are very preventable, but they would like to tell you we should just not do anything about them. We tell you on key proposition that we could prevent yeah. these type of deaths from occurring. Then, going to their second argument, they tell you that, well, if we truly want to save the most lives, then we can only focus on the economy because there's so many people that are in starvation due to poverty. We would agree that poverty is a huge issue that we face in the world today, but we don't think that we can't like look at both issues. On team proposition, we're not saying that the environment must come at the expense of like a country's economy and that we have to just like completely get rid of economies and destroy them in order to like say that the environment is important. No, we think that these two things can still coexist with each other. For example, we see that many developed countries have sustainable growth, showing that yes, they do value their economy, but they understand that sometimes the environment has to come first. This is just true. But then second, we think when they talk about starvation, well, let's actually address how starvation occurs. It's because there's a drought. It's because people literally can't grow food to feed their populace. It's because there's no clean water or just water that exists in the first place. If you truly want to tackle world, world hunger, then you should probably try to fix the issue of having just access to water in general and having clean water on top of that. These are very real issues that we can tackle in the proposition world if we could all agree that yes, the environment is going to be more important. But then let's go back down over our case. Now before I continue. So let me ask you something. What about countries that aren't in that developing process? How they are going to afford taking care of the environment? Okay, so I'm glad you bring this up. Like Ella made clear in her own first speech, is that what we see is that green technology is currently becoming more affordable. What we saw that in 2015, it was the first year that developing countries were the ones to use the most green renewable energy. So we see that actually how the trend is going, these developing countries, these low income countries can afford these type of technologies. So we don't think there's an excuse for them to refuse to do so. And we can see with concrete examples, such as Kenya having the most um, solar panels per capita in its own country. So this is not an issue that we see here. They can't afford these green technologies and it's only going to become cheaper in the future as more countries choose to invest in them. So going back over our case, what we tell you with our first argument is that there's a principal reason why we should believe that the environment is more important. First, we tell you when it comes to people, we should ensure that they one, can be alive and then two, that they have a good quality of life. They tell you, well, without an economy, you can't really like respond to things like natural disasters, and that's ultimately going to hurt low-income people the most. But if they're concerned about natural disasters and how it impacts us, then I would beg them to address the issue that natural disasters are only going to increase when you see global warming increase. If you want to get rid of these problems that team opposition brings up, then once again, we should probably try to fix the amount of degradation we've done to the environment ourselves. Yeah. But then second, when, when we bring up how we should like, you know, have faith in the environment and value it, they say, well, why, should, why do animals exactly matter more than humans? We say, we say that when it comes to the environment, you shouldn't look at it in an anthropocentric way and only see it as being able to benefit us, but you should see that since we live on this earth, we probably shouldn't destroy every other living creature around us. We think that's just morally corrupt. Then going down to our second point, where we talk about physical health. We give you very clear reasons of how global warming, how degrading the environment hurts us, such as air pollution causing millions of deaths each year, water pollution causing millions of deaths each year. And when you do this, when you do things like this that can totally be preventable and ignore them, it's only going to increase in the future, something that's just unresponded to on their side. So with that being said, let's go to our third argument today, which is that environmental exploitation also harms the economy. So there's, there are three layers to this. First, resource instability. Second, environmental instability. And lastly, exploitation. So going to the first layer, which is the sustainability of resources. 
what we understand is that environmental growth and benefits cannot exist when the environment is literally exploited into the oblivion. What we see here is that what the trend is is countries use fossil fuels, but since these types of things are non-renewable, at the current rate of consumption that we use them, eventually they are going to run out, and so are the benefits that come with it too. We see yeah. it's not just non-renewables that are at risk too, but other resources, such as water, that is quickly disappearing as the temperature rises each year. When you look to Sub-Saharan Africa, they currently face a widespread drought across the area. Not only is this bad for just access to clean water and drinking water in general, it's also bad for farming. When you aren't able to grow crops, it only increases the prices of food, I meaning this is actually going to hurt the economies they're so concerned about because it's a lot harder for people to have purchasing power in these areas. So we think if you're actually concerned about the economy, we think that there's very real harms to them when you don't look in the environment. Then, going to the second layer under this, which is environmental instability. What we understand is that environmental disruptions are very destabilizing to economies and they're only going to suffer as they increase. For example, with rising sea levels that are in conjunction with global warming, we see that countries that are islands are more at risk at flooding. Countries such as the Maldives, Tonga, Kiribati, and the Marshall Islands, not only are their economies literally destroyed, the whole entire country, the very people in it are destroyed. They're completely wiped off of the map. Not only, once again, do we think we should be focusing on the economy, but also the very people that we kill when we choose to ignore the environment. Then going to the last layer, which is exploitation. What we understand is resources continue to disappear. It turns to exploitive practices. In Thailand, where they use fishing, because of overfishing, it's decreasing the fish populations, which hurts farmers, forces them to turn to cheaper labor because it's a lot harder to fish for the same amount and make the same amount of money. This is why slavery has increased in that country with the conjunction of the, fish, of the amount of fish decreasing as well. So, if you truly care about eradicating poverty, if you truly care about human rights, then you should probably truly care about the environment as well. Thank you. Sneaky time was 8 minutes and 12 seconds. Please welcome the second speaker for the opposition. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let me repeat you the motion one more time. This house believes that environment is more important than economic growth. I will start by refuting some points made by the proposition team. Okay, first of all, we are saying that we should prioritize economic growth. We are not saying that environmental crisis is not important. We are saying that we should prioritize the economic growth. Why? Because nowadays I, I, it's people dying in front of our faces. And the only way that we can help them is by help the country develop, to start developing yourself. So that's what we are saying. Also, if we ask these countries to um, prioritize the, the, in the environment, first of all, they're not, they don't have a way to help the environment because they, have, they, are, they, have, they, haven't, they don't have a good economy. So, how do they going to afford this environment, this crisis that, that we are living sure. in today? Deny, deny. So that's what we're saying. This point I will explain better in my argumentation. Also, the second speaker of the opposition team talk about countries that are destroyed. So, because of natural disaster. So, isn't it the best way to help them to? We build our city to rebuild our country with economy, with the economic Sir. growth denied, to, to improve their society, to improve their economy. So that way they they could live in a better way, with better conditions, with in a way that Sir. they can enjoy their lives, in a way that they can start living, literally. That's what we are saying. Also, many people are dying because starvation. They are dying because we don't provide their basic needs. They don't have the possibility to have their basic needs. So I don't know why focusing on the environment will help these people. So actually we should start, we should start taking care of these people. We should 
t start thinking about grew up as a word, as all together, to help everybody and to be fair with each other. So that's what we are saying. Because if we don't have, if we <coughs> don't stop these massive um, murders, because they are the uh, massive, um, these people that are dying, first of all, to have a future, we should have a life now, we should have a present. If we don't, Sir. hold it, if we don't, have lives now. We do. We won't have lives to, uh, tomorrow in our future. Yes. You say that these low-income countries can't afford green technology, but like I just brought up in my speech, in 2015, they were the ones that were leading in the amount of green technology being used across the world. I, I, you know how much it uh, costs to a country to rebuild six hundred eight million dollars. So you are saying that. The environment is a cheap to to help the environment is a cheap way. So actually, I have just given an example that is not to a country costs a lot to take care of their environment. And actually, the the countries that are are not in a developing process can't afford this. So that's why I will pass to my argumentation. First of all the limited resources that a country has. Also, so we are establishing that if we don't, so we have to focus on the environment, that's what Professor Ting are saying. But I prefer to, for example, have a better economy to help people that are sick, to put a hospital so they can be helped in a good way, in good conditions. Sure. Hold it. In, deny. In a good condition. You know? So actually, but we are saying that I prefer to build a hospital to help people that are dying that we are not helping to stop a, 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 an industry. So actually, we have to help lives now so we have lives in the future. We have to help our present so we have future. That's what we are saying. That's, so the short-term hope that we are bringing here is to help everybody, to help poverty, to help also all the world. And if we help now, People that are dying in front of our faces, we have a, we will have a future. We will have, we will have lives. We will grow up as, as a society, you know. So that's what we say, what we are saying. I prefer to help people that are dying, that because of starvation, because of bad uh, conditions. That's what we are saying. We should put the hospital. We should help them in a good way. Also, I will pass to my second argument, my the third argument. That is. Think today, live tomorrow. What about, as I said before, countries that aren't in a developing process? Fact, countries that can't, that aren't living in good conditions, that aren't actually living. They want now. They don't. They have a bad present now, and if we don't help them, they will have a bad future, or even they won't. They won't have a future. So actually, if they don't have a future, they. Our planet is going to destroy ourselves. We won't have a future to our own. So actually we're saying that if you force these countries, if you said, no, we should provide the environment, these countries, how are they going to provide the environment if they even have the economy to do it? They even have lives. Sir. Deny. They, they, they don't have the possibility to prioritize the Sir. environment, hold it, the environment. So actually, that's what we are saying. We are saying that for if you want to prioritize the environment, well, do it in the future. But now we should have, we should, we should help the person, the people that are dying. We should, have, we should help these countries to grow up as a country, and then they should prioritize the environment. But now the economy that you sent to me. Just as you also agree that the environment is important, we also think that the economy is important. And as Colette has continually demonstrated, it is possible for countries to achieve economic growth and and value their environment. But impoverished countries can definitely afford to okay, okay. to invest in green technologies. Yes. But she only said green technology. He, he didn't, she didn't say about how much, how will this, this person gonna develop, how this person is gonna work. So actually you're saying, yes, green technology exists. They can't uh, maybe create them or use them, but 
maybe it's not as cheap as the maybe the country is very poor and they actually can't even buy these green technologies. So you are forcing them to find a solution with no resources themselves. You're trying to force these countries that aren't even living, that are most of that population is dying and we are not doing nothing. Actually we are we are like leaving them aside so we care about our future. But their future what? What about their future? The people that are dying in our faces, people that are, that are sick, that can't even afford to go to a hospital to take to so people take care of them. So actually that's what we are saying. And the only countries that can develop liberalize their environment is the people that are developed. They are, they are, that is the minority. So, actually, the world is not going to work as in, in a fair way, in a good way, in a way that we are all together. So, for all these reasons, I strongly believe this motion should, must, and we fall. Thank you very much. Speaking time was 8 minutes and 18 seconds. Let me now please welcome Ali to give the third speech. Alright, is everybody ready? Okay. Nigeria has seen massive economic growth over the past few decades, but there are a few problems with that. They've lost 10% of their ecosystems, they have 80,000 deaths each year because of air pollution, 177,000 deaths each year because of water pollution, and their average life expectancy is 48 years. What we would say, ladies and gentlemen, is that's not an acceptable solution. Prioritizing the economy over the environment has done nothing for Nigeria, and it will do nothing for the rest of the world. <coughs> now in this speech, I'm going to do a couple of things. First, we'll talk about the lens through which we view the round, and then I'll ask you three questions about why you should view the round. First, who helps economies? Second, who helps the environment and why that matters? And third, who helps individuals? Now, let's begin with how we evaluate this round. Now, we are not trying to say that no economic growth should occur, or that economic growth isn't important in any way, just that it doesn't come first, and that prioritizing the environment is a more crucial step. But furthermore, we both agree that both sides have to show which thing matters more, the economy or the environment. And what's really crucial is part of that process is showing what comes first in terms of order. And since Colette beautifully outlined for you the fact that hurting the environment hurts the economy, you can clearly see that in order to secure the economy, you have to protect the environment. But furthermore, we have fulfilled their burden of proving that this crisis is true, because not only, as Colette said, do almost every scientist believe that global warming is real man-made, but furthermore, air pollution and water pollution and deforestation are impacts which they accept and agree are true. But furthermore, if you believe about the future, what we have told you throughout this round is that while money can come back, the environment can't, neither can a life. If you want to secure the future, you have to vote for the proposition. Because greed shouldn't come before need, we're proud to propose. But before I move on... Yes, you said that a, a life can come back. So why wouldn't... why? us to take care about the people that are dying because starvation, that are dying because they don't have good conditions, because uh, the economy of their country is destroyed. Because the problem is, destroying the environment enhances the conditions. When you have global warming, when you have water pollution, there's less food and water and more disease that kills the very people that we both care about. But now the first question you have to ask yourself in this round is who helps the global economy? Now the big point that they make is that they claim countries can't afford to protect their environment. But as Ella and Colette both outline, green technology and regulations are becoming significantly more affordable. Colette tells you that right now developing countries use more green technology than the developed world. Let's look at a couple examples. For one, Kenya uses more solar power per individual in their country than almost any other country in the world. 
Brazil and Costa Rica both use over 80% renewable energy. It's not that countries can't afford renewable energy. It's not that they can't afford to protect their people. It's just that they refuse to do so. But furthermore, a really important thing about green technology is that what this does is acts as a price signal. When people realize they have to prioritize their environments, that's when they invest in things like green technology because they know they have to use it, and that makes it more affordable for the rest of the world. But furthermore, destroying the environment is going to be a much bigger harm to the economy because what it does is it destroys natural resources and destroys agriculture. That's why global warming costs $1.2 trillion each year. In the developing world, that impact is much more severe. The harms combined of air pollution and climate change have cost up to 11% of those countries' GDPs. But before I move on... You actually think that countries that are refusing to care about their environment I, how they are going, if they can't afford even take care of their population, how they are going to prioritize the environment? Well, I just proved that they're able to do so, whether via green tech, which is growing increasingly cheaper, or regulations like cap and trade, which is an environmentally and economically friendly way to prevent emissions from growing out of control. But furthermore, Colette outlines for you the fact yeah. that hurting the environment hurts the economy. We tell you that happens in a couple of ways. First, we tell you that you use up the resources that a country has. When it's dependent on these resources, if you use them too quickly, not only do you hurt their economy in the long term, but you eliminate it. But furthermore, we tell you that when you hurt the environment, individuals are exploited. We give you the example of the fishing industry, where the fewer fish there are, the more hard labor is used, and the more exploitation you see. But furthermore, we know that when you see environmental harms, you see more disease, you see more heat, you see less water. That's a problem because on the practical level, there are economic impacts that hurts workers and hurts their ability to work also decreasing the economy in the long run. But furthermore, as I already addressed, one really bad impact of global warming is that it kills agriculture. A lot of the developing world relies heavily on agriculture for their economy. You destroy their economies when you say that these big economies are the only thing that matters. But the second question you have to ask yourself in this round is who's protecting the environment and why is that important? Now we give you two reasons that protecting the environment is incredibly important. First, we tell you that the environment has inherent value. It has life. But furthermore, what we explain to you is that the environment sustains our lives and the lives of other living creatures as well. Now, we see a few huge harms from the current crisis. Uh, each day, 2 million tons of waste are dumped into our waterways. 3.5 million people die each year as a result, including 1.5 million kids. That's 4,000 children dying each day through something we can solve through telling companies that they can't dump in the water. That way outlaws whatever economic cost that they risk by disposing of what they're doing in a safe way. But furthermore, we tell you about air pollution. We tell you 600,000 kids are dying because of it. That's a massive impact as well. At the level where we see that people are dying now, the environment is being lost now, the best way to protect the future is to protect the environment. But the third question you have to ask yourself Point today is who helps individuals? Now what we tell you is that the government has a duty to protect the people, not just those at the top who benefit from massive economic growth. Yeah. Now something that we both talk about is the issue of starvation. Yes. We agree that starvation is a critical point and that we all have to address it. However, they never show why they help it more than we do, especially considering that right now, governments tend to prioritize the economy and people are still starving. But we tell you we hurt, they hurt this in a couple of ways. First, because global warming destroys agriculture, again, furthermore, because not only does water evaporate because of global warming, but they directly pollute it, meaning people can't drink. As a result, you not only see people starving, you not only see people in drought, but where there is food, since it becomes more scarce, it becomes much more unaffordable. But furthermore, they try to make this point about natural disasters, but they ignore what Colette says, which is that global warming has been proven to increase these natural disasters. When you see more humidity in the air, you see more of these as a result, meaning you kill many more people, which we could easily avoid. However, increasing the Shanghai Composite by 0.01%, that doesn't prevent natural disasters. But a final issue that we both address is health. Now, a critical problem is that global warming increases disease through air and water pollution. You can look at Peru for an example. Though they might have economic growth in the past few years, what they've seen is an increase in dumping and environmental harms, and as a result, they're seeing an increase in diseases, including 
malaria. What you see is that when you prioritize the economy over the environment, you increase disease. People don't care about health, they care about profits. Because people are more important than profits, we're proud to propose. Um, Thomas, give the third opposition speech. Yeah, so. yeah. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We have a proposition team which has stated that there will there is a cri environmental crisis. But as their first speaker said, you will be you will be seeing the the problems in the future. What happens if? We have someone that says that, and then we have a, a third speaker and a second speaker that says we're, we're having a lot of problems in which this, this climate change is affecting a lot, so there's a contradiction in nowadays. But let's move on. First of all, I'm going to remind you the, the motion. This house believes that environment is more important than economic growth. There is a team proposition that should prove us that environment is more important than economic growth. It's not that team opposition has to prove that economic growth is more important than environment, but that economic growth can go in, in, in the side of environment or be more important, but not that clearly. Then, passing to my two points of class that I have the highlighted in, in this debate, there are effects on society and periods of helping. We have, we have a proposition team that has stated us that we, that we are having it, we are going to help the, the environment, therefore there is going to be a better society. No one is going to, they never stated us that there's one not going to be a really bad effect, a really bad drawback in the society, which would be, which will might broaden the, th the theme of starvation or having, uh, or having people that can't go to a hospital to cure themselves of the malaria that they said. It's that, it's that point, ladies and gentlemen. They told us that there are examples that showed that they, there are examples nowadays from Brazil, for example, that they say that they're happy nowadays and they can afford it. Okay, so you can see the aspects that are making this society get worse. You can see the aspect that this society, as you have put this environmental things that solve this, then you know that, there's got, that there are gonna be drawbacks that are not that good. As they say, they're got, this helping the environment isn't that good because you, you're, nowadays you're presenting that we're gonna be worse in the future. So now helping is not that good. So, why don't we help the economic growth? That we will bring a starvation decrease as it has been in the in the past few years and in the ten, then since 1990 till 2016, there's has been a 21 percent of decrease in in starvation. But we keep still moving on, unless. But the problem is that it has been a better. Sure. No, thank you. But the problem is that in desperate percentage, it was higher. But then they have this examples that they have of this eco this environmental things that they put on that was it was going to be better for the future society that's got, that's going to be my second point of class and I'm moving on now that is they're pro they're trying to prove us that there's going to be a long term there's going to be a future there's going to be something to go on but what happens with now Sir. what happens no thank you what happens with the people that are dying now what ha what happens with them? We're just trying to save them and then do the long term. We're trying to prioritize short term and long term, but we have a proposition team and just prioritizing, prioritizing the long term. We're trying, they're saying, oh no, we have to, we have to help the environment in, so that we have a mere future. But if, if sure. no thank you, but if we have gotten to those no renewable effects 
and we have gotten there, we have gotten to those point of no returns, why are we saying just nowadays that we need to help them then? Why do we need that? Why are we even caring of helping environment that if sure. we are no thank you if we, we are already doomed as it as it they as it didn't clarify sure. no thank you then and then we have a team of decision that say that that or clarify you that we need to save these people first we need to save these people that sign that doesn't have money to to go to a hospital because the hospital hasn't been built because the economic growth hasn't hasn't couldn't be uh, couldn't be better <coughs> than couldn't be getting better sure. you know, thank you to get an eco better economic growth therefore you they say that you would progress in windmill than a hospital then then a hospital that also wait please that they would that they would say that it's not important compared to windmill but you disagree Yes, economic growth can be important. You need hospitals and things like that. But how is it going to exist when the resources that it relies on are gone? That's what, what I'm getting to the long term that we propose. As long term of our part of, of view is if we're in that point of no return, as they, as, they, as they said, and we need to stop it, it's not that we're, got, we're saying that it's just a point of no return since now. And if you, we don't do anything just in the moment here it's gonna be a somebody, somebody that is not there's no way of going back it is a way of going back if not we would have we have, would have think it off in the in the past but we can we can solve problems that are just more urgent in nowadays society which are salvation which are in celebrity in these people in that then the things that you say that are not possible, way please, but there is a problem. Either is people from nowadays and people and save the planet later, we will be an urgency of of economic growth before uh, before a, a environment, or would be an environment just letting know that it's just environment, but you disagree. In no way are the millions of people dying of air and water pollution less important than economic growth, especially considering that when you have global warming, you have less food for those starving people to eat in the first place. Ma'am, can I tell you something? You just, you have brought in us so much examples, so much things, and we have research for you just as seven, 700 or 800, because it's a rounded number, million of deaths from starvation from the UN because we want to say to you that is not a false assumption as we don't know if it is yours that are dying so and you say that we can afford in all these things we can afford in this in this environment where the supposedly develop, developing countries are the ones who are buying the things so where are the desperate starving people where are these people dying? Is it, or if it is, is it a problem that you're trying to solve the environment just, that you're trying to solve in the environment, that you're getting the profit for environment, but not the profit for people that are dying, and then solve the environment? For, so for all those reasons, I, I and my team believe that this motion should fall. Thank you very much. Time was eight minutes and seven seconds. Please welcome Francisco Francisco to close the opposition. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here for the last time to prove you how an hospital is better to, to construct an hospital is better than construct a windmill. Ladies and gentlemen, we are I'm here to analyze the case by proposition side and opposition side. To begin with, I will analyze if proposition team has tackled the uh, 
but for the environment has tackled the, fu the future, the human race, and also the individuals. And also, I will analyze if opposition team has tackled in all aspects of the future hum uh, human race and also individuals. To begin with, in terms of who saved more lives, ladies and gentlemen, proposition team has clearly stated that. Uh, that clearly state that there are too many people dying of environment uh, because of contamination, of pollution, of global warming, ladies and gentlemen. We, as opposition, have so that there are people dying. But is it as harder than the 800 million people dying due to starvation? So, in order of this, in order to this, we should still prioritize and reduce this number of starvation, or will still continue uh, or, or, or start constru uh, construction uh, 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 plants that are not easy, ladies and gentlemen. That is the second that are not cheaper. That is the second point. <coughs> opposition team has clearly the uh, proposition team. Sorry, has clearly talked about how to, uh, that we may tackle the global warming, we must tackle pollution. Ladies and gentlemen, how many countries can afford this? How many countries can do this? Are developing countries, are countries such as Haiti, such as uh, 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 Mozambique or something like that, can reach these, uh, these windmills can these countries do this? No, it is not as simple as you are proposing, ladies and gentlemen. What we have done, what we have took, that we, we accept that the countries are not, not all the countries clearly, clear, are clearly prepared, uh, prepared to, to afford this situation. So, ladies and gentlemen, in terms of tackling the problem, the main problem, of this case, that the people are dying from hunger, for sanity, etc. We accept, we propose to save this life that is more urgent than saving the future life. Ladies and gentlemen, Proposition 10 has told us that the new, the new, uh, the new uh, technologies are cheap, ladies and gentlemen, as my second speaker talked, there is nothing that, that it costs six million dollars and that also we force countries to focus on environment when their mainly point should be focuses on their mainly dies the starvation thank you so much speaking time was three minutes and 36 And for the last time, please welcome Colette to close the day. Complex questions like how do we tackle world poverty and world hunger are never going to come with just simple answers. And it's because we believe this to be true that we are very proud to propose today. So, a few things in the speech. First, I will be going over what should have been considered in the round. Then I'll be asking two questions. First, who best helps the economy? And second, who best helps the environment? So what we brought up since Ella's speech is that when we talk about the environment and economy coming into conflict, that team opposition should show us why, when this happens, that the economy has to be more important. But with that being said, from the context of the round, we don't think they provide an adequate reason enough. So going to the first question, who best helps the economy, they tell you that we should help these economies now and then we can focus on the environment later. While that might sound nice in theory, we don't think this is good in actual practice. What we are saying is that we're not saying that countries can't help their people, can't build hospitals for them, but that they can do this, but at the same time showing that the environment is, is going to be important, which is exactly what we see with countries choosing to have sustainable growth, such as developed countries like Canada having carbon taxes, and developing countries like Vietnam and Thailand that are choosing to have cap and trade programs to show that yes, the environment is important. So we believe you can focus on your economy 
and focus on the environment and say that it's important. Then what they tell you is that, well, these low-income countries aren't going to be able to afford these greater technologies. We think this just is factually incorrect. What we tell you in 2015, it was the first year that non-renewables were at the highest in low that renewable energy was at the highest in low-income countries. So we see that, yes, these countries can't afford it. We don't think there's an excuse for them to continue to not use them. No engagement down the bench from team opposition. But then second, what we see here is that when you harm the environment, you harm economies as well. What we see is resources disappearing, such as water in sub-Saharan Africa, where they're going through a drought that prevents them from literally feeding their own people, which is only going to hurt the economy in the long run, or where, or where countries like the Maldives, Tonga, Kiribati will literally be underwater by the year 2050 if we don't do something about the environment. These are very real harms to the economy that come when we harm the environment, something team opposition, once again, doesn't even address. So let's go to the second question today, which is who best helps the environment? We tell, what we see here is that they literally, once again, don't even engage with the fact that we think that it's a principally good thing to say that yes, we should value and protect the environment because we tell you that it's principally bad to ignore the many harms we've made over the centuries to the environment and continue to exploit it, but they would let these practices continue. We see and understand if that countries were to prioritize the environment, they could prevent many deaths that they even talk about in their own arguments, deaths that come from things as air pollution, water pollution, droughts that drive the famine and the starvation that they are so concerned about. If countries to understand that these things could be solved, could be solved currently in this year, then we would not see the amount of environmental degradation and the amount of lives lost every day. So, if you truly stand for eradicating disease, starvation, and eradicating poverty, and if you truly stand for understanding that this is a real issue that we face today and that we should probably be doing something about the environment instead of letting the continuous harms just fester, then you stand on the side of team proposition. Thank you. Speaking time was three minutes and 35 seconds. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I invite now both teams to cross the floor, shake hands, and then I'd like everybody to leave the room while the judges take their seats.